So I think it's fair to say Nigel is at his uh, nadir when we're reunited yes. with him at the beginning of the film. Can you just sort of set the scene of where he is in his life? As you said, at a slow point, um, he's he's literally been through a a jet engine, um, not metaphorically, uh, and uh, he's weakened. He's psychologically damaged. He's, he's, it's quite a disturbing place to begin with a character. How self-conscious is he as a, as a villain? I'm thinking of, you know, he wants to wait until midnight, doesn't he? Because that's the sort of more evil time to uh, wreak his revenge on Blue. And how do you kind of rate him as uh, an evil doer? <laughs> uh, well, well, I guess if Hannibal Lecter is one end of the scale, and uh, I guess would you... Would you choose a hero as a... Well, how, what is, how does the scale work, do you think? Yeah, Hannibal Lecter's a pretty good one at 10. Mm. What, he's not quite Lecter. N- no. No, on the Lecter scale. <laughs> That's good, actually. He's, he's, he's seven on the... Five, four, three on the Lecter scale. The Lecter scale of villainy. I think you should uh, copyright that one. <laughs> um, why is he still so determined, after all that he's been through, for, to sort of wreak revenge on these bluebirds? In the, in the first movie, it wasn't really about revenge it was more a job he was a bounty hunter i suppose you might say um but this one he's just all his problems he puts down to this to this uh one bird uh i guess he sees that as a solution in real life i don't think this is the approach to take i think i think it's best to forget and move on um, there's definitely a lot for um, older member, members of the audience to enjoy, I think. I like when we're first reintroduced to uh, Nigel, we see his sort of frustrated thespian uh, mm. side coming out. He's got the, uh, the bird skull in his claw and reciting a bit of Hamlet. <laughs> um, how, well, how old are these audience members? Like 300 <laughs> years old? <laughs> yeah, yeah they, they remember it the first time round. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> um, how kind of representative of that is um, of the movie is that, that kind of element that older audiences are going to enjoy as well as obviously young young people. I think not just with kids movies but any comedy you should just go for all levels clever stupid it's not you shouldn't um, reject it just on you know sometimes when I used to be a script writer um, writing sketches for TV often the note you'd get was it's too clever and don't ever I don't think you should ever use that as a reason to cut something out. And people are going to watch these films over, over and over again, aren't they? So, Hopefully. But yeah, yeah, that's the... Well, no, kids will. Because kids just watch movies um, ad nauseum. They just keep... <laughs> they, just, they just watch some movies every day. You know, some kids, when they get it, they choose their movie and they stick with it. Tell us about Nigel's sidekick, the um, amorous amphibian, uh, Gabby. Um, amorous Amazonian am- amphibian, if you're going to carry on the alliteration. See, I'm, I'm not brave enough to put in that many. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a tricky, it's a tongue twister. <laughs> Uh, well, yeah, what does Nigel um, make, make of her? Voiced by Kristen Chenoweth very brilliantly, I think. Yes, she's an amazing singer. And so is the frog. Um, and that's no coincidence, I suppose. Uh, I think, to be honest, James, I think he's just using her for for her um, poison, for her ability. You know, she's one of those frogs that uh, the um, tribes people of the Amazon would they would dip their their dart into the into the um, the substance, the poisonous goo that comes off their skin, and use that as as um, a deadly weapon. And that's what that's what he's hoping for. Um, there's a strong musical aspect to the film, like there was for uh, the, the first movie as well. Yeah, even more so with this one, I think. Yeah. I liked Poisonous Love. That was probably the highlight of uh, the movie for me, actually. I liked yeah, it. that was the highlight of um, doing the movie for me. Yeah, um, doing a Phantom Star uh, performance. So I uh, had to really concentrate on getting the notes, and um, we would have to. I'd have a go and then rewind and then just go back to it again and the composer John Powell will sing me the note and then I'll just copy him. I can't read music. Um, so, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm illiterate when it comes to musical score. How about I Will Survive, those kind of reworked kind of lyrics in there? How involved were you in, in that? Uh, I, I wrote most of the rap bit and... Um, 
that was more that was more just um because they <laughs> they surprised me with it they uh, I turned up on the day and recorded the song and then said mm, we've got a few hours will you do a rap and uh so we did so we recorded that wrote it down first and you've been to Brazil I think you were there promoting the first movie. Yeah. How, how well do you think the film captures what you got to know of the country? Probably mainly inside hotel rooms, I imagine. But. You would be amazed that um, how accurately they recreate the landscape. And uh, it, it's almost as if you're seeing the real place. You know, there's one part of the film, you see the, the Amazon River and there's two part two rivers can join. Um, one has this sort of brown, dirty water, and one has clear water, and they don't mix. They they just can join, and then they run alongside each other. I don't know how it works. Don't ask me. If that's what you're going to ask me. But there's a shot of that in the film, which is completely generated by computer, but totally accurate in the way they captured it. So, and you voiced... Um, I've even heard someone claim that they could see their, f their house in the first movie. But that's I, incredible, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and, the, and the director put his own house in it as well. And you voiced a minion, didn't you, in um, Despicable Me? And um, I think they were the breakout sort of popular characters from that movie. A lot of people have been saying that Nigel is very much their favourite character from the first, Rio. Um, how does it feel to always be sort of the, the popular one in terms of your uh, characters in animated movies? Well, they did pitch up my voice in Despicable Me. You can't really tell it's me, though. They to the point where they don't need me anymore. They just they can just um, they just um, turn a lever around. But uh, yeah, yeah, that was crazy, by the way, because there's no script for for those characters. It's, they just describe what's happening, and then I'd say like, "Ringy mingo, da ba da za ba da," you know, or whatever, <laughs> you know, and. But for hours. And every evil character needs an evil laugh. Nigel's is brilliant. How did you. Darth manage... Vader doesn't. He never laughs. True. He has a breath. Where's though. he on the lecture scale? He's quite high as well. He's really... pretty high. He's supposed yeah. to be up there. <laughs> 9.1. I think Nigel needed a good laugh though, and you, you, you find one. And there's definitely a kind of an element of, of cockatoo in there. How did you kind of get that laugh? Did yeah, that's part of it. Um, wanting to sound like a screeching cockatoo. But also, I have a high, girly laugh. I know, it's hard to imagine. But um, my life's kind of like, <laughs> like that, so it's already part way there. And then just mix a bit of cockatoo in there. And then there you have it. And as well as working with Gabby on this, you've been working with another famous frog recently. Can you tell us about your Muppets experience? On That's the right. Muppets um, much less poisonous one, uh, Kermit the Frog um, from the Muppets. And also he's a respected journalist in his own right, for, uh, fronting the Muppet News. He, he must be an inspiration to you. Uh, there's quite a Kermit reaction. Um, what was the question about him? What was it like? It's really fun. Uh, in, the, in an animation, you don't see everything. It's up to the animators to, um, to create the, you know, the characters afterwards. And um, in the Muppets, you're seeing it. You're talking to a frog. I'm even threatening Kermit the frog. So what, um, quite a moment for me. Jermaine Comont, thanks very much. Good to meet you. Thanks yeah. for pronouncing my name in the French way. <laughs>